Welcome everyone, I'm Bulldog1205, and today I'm going to be your guide to help you get started playing the Alluvium Overworld beta. If you would like access to the beta, you can go join the waitlist on their website, link below, but this is currently a closed beta, so not everyone has immediate access. When you first load up the game, you will start here in the Sanctum Mesa. This is your home base. You will do things like forge items here, but we don't have anything to forge at the moment, so let's go travel somewhere else and start collecting resources. Move to the center of this gorgeous structure and hit E to pull up the region travel map. This is beta, so right now there is only one other location to travel to, Crimson Waste. Once we click on Crimson Waste, we will see four different stages. Stage zero to stage three. The higher the stage, the more powerful the resources and alluvials you will find. Stage zero is the free to play area and costs nothing to travel to. All other stages cost fuel. During the beta, player fuel is reset to 5,000 every day to help us explore higher stage areas and test out the game. Once general release arrives, progress will be reset, and this fuel will have to be obtained from land or via the market. So later on, it will be extremely important to be efficient with your fuel usage, but feel free to splurge away here in the beta. I recommend traveling to zero to stage zero to start with, so you can begin building up your alluvial collection to help you out at higher stages. Now that we've traveled to the Crimson Waste, let's go over the basic gameplay loop. We have two main objectives, collect resources and capture alluvials. In order to capture alluvials, we will need shards, which is one of the resources we will be harvesting. So let's go out and find some. After we cover the basic controls, of course. To move around, simply use the WASD keys, hold shift to sprint, space to jump, and shift while airborne to activate the jetpack. You can jump multiple times in the air, but keep an eye on the meter below you. Both your jumps and your jetpack drain that meter, but it does recharge quickly once you return to the ground. There's an intermediate technique I call the slingshot jump, which can help you move very quickly around the map, but we won't cover that here. I'll have a separate video up on that move. You can activate your visor with Q to help find and highlight nearby areas that can be harvested. Keep in mind, your starting visor is very limited, so don't rely on it too much though. M will pull up your map and display all of the options available to you down below. And finally, F will allow you to, to set a transport beacon to allow you to quickly teleport back to a location you've already visited. There are no enemies to harm you here, but I can speak from experience in saying that falling into the green acid-like substance will definitely result in your death and send you back to the start of the location. Now, let's collect some resources. Straight ahead of us, we can see a harvestable item lit up in red. Let's go over and harvest it. Harvestable items are things such as plants around the Alluvium universe. We will need these in crafting certain items. Press E to harvest it. Doing so will drain the specified amount of energy. The energy bar is located at the bottom right of the screen. That energy is the entire amount you will have to use in this location. Once it is depleted, we will have nothing meaningful left to do in the location and will need to travel back to the Sanctum. Energy is reset every time we travel back to an area. Remember, outside of stage zero locations, it will cost us fuel to travel. Harvestable items will be important later, but starting out, we really wanna look for extractable deposits instead. These have a distinct shape, so they are easy to identify and are also labeled differently on your map. Deposits are important because amongst other important things, they contain shards. Shards are what we need to catch alluvials. Since any creature capture game inevitably gets compared to Pokemon, shards are kind of the equivalent of Pokeballs. Once we find a deposit, we have two options. First, we can scan it to get a better idea of what we can extract from it. The control button on your keyboard will activate your arrow, allowing you to mouse over and see what each icon represents. This is important later as it allows you to conserve energy if the deposit doesn't contain what you're looking for, but I wouldn't recommend scanning early on. The default scanner is pretty weak and leaves us several unknown items, and we kind of need everything to start with anyways. Unlike harvesting, extracting can take several attempts to gather all of the resources. Different types of deposits are more likely to drop certain types of items, but there is still randomness involved. But hey, we got a shard fragment here! Let's go ahead and take it back to the Sanctum and cover how to forge, so then we can start catching alluvials. We can teleport back. Over here at the Sanctum, we have two main areas important for the overworld, the forge and the locker. The forge is what will allow us to upgrade our weapons, armor, equipment, or even fuse alluvials into more powerful versions. I will do a separate in-depth guide on forging armaments, equipment, augments, and everything else. For now, we just need to come to the shard section and cure our shards. You can see there are different types of shards that will allow us to catch higher tier alluvials. Once we cure our shards, they will be sent to our locker, so we need to go pick those up. Simply go to the locker, click on the craftable section, and then right-click to withdraw any cured shards. 
Now it's time to finally catch an alluvial. Alluvials are found in encounter portals which appear as glowing floating balls around the map. We have to shoot it to access the portal. Be careful as the portal will disappear forever if you shoot and miss or get too close. By jumping in the air and right clicking to aim down the sights, we can slow down time to help increase our accuracy. Once we shoot, we'll have the option of immediately jumping into the encounter or scanning it to find out what we are up against. I recommend scanning initially as each portal contains a random number of alluvials. We start with only two alluvials, so we don't want to immediately jump into a portal with five enemies that would just quickly wipe us. That would be a waste of energy and send us back to the start of the location, as entering the encounter does cost energy. Now that we are in an encounter, we can see Arena fighting for the very first time. This is a primary reason we want to catch alluvials in the first place, so we can take them into battle. To attempt to catch these alluvials, we must first defeat them. This is an auto battle where we would strategically place alluvials onto the battlefield and then let them go to work on their own. I will have a more in-depth guide on arena tactics at a later date. There's no reason to get too complicated right now. While I have my own alluvials pulled up though, I do want to highlight the alluvial tiers. You can tell the tier of an alluvial or even items and resources by the number of bars at the top of the card. Tier zero alluvial will have zero bars. On the right side of my screen, you can see a tier three alluvial that has three bars. You can also see the stage of the alluvial. The alluvial on the left side of my screen has one hexagon highlighted, meaning they are stage one. The three on the right have two hexagons highlighting, meaning they are stage two. Three of the same stage alluvial can be fused together to increase its stage. To make another Pokemon comparison, this is the equivalent of evolving your alluvials. But back to the battle. Let's send some alluvials out to the arena to fight. Each one has a cost associated with it. The dimensional stability will decrease as you put more and or stronger alluvials on the battlefield. This is the purple bar at the top of the encounter. This impacts your odds of catching alluvials at the end. If it drops below zero, we will be unable to attempt to catch any of these creatures. I have a pretty powerful alluvial for this area, so I took the battle with ease. Now let's try and catch them. To catch, simply click on the alluvial you would like to catch and then drag a shard to it. Shards have tiers just like alluvials and higher tiers will increase your chances of catching. Shard fragments are tier zero and cannot catch any alluvials above tier zero. Now we just have to wait and let Mozart do his thing. If you see fireworks, we are all golden. There we go. Now that we have caught an alluvial, it goes back to the locker in the Sanctum. Once we add it to our deck, we will be able to take on stronger packs of alluvials. The stronger our, our lineups get, the stronger the alluvials we can go catch. And on and on as we repeat the cycle, climbing to higher stages in the game. So far, I'm absolutely loving it, and I'm hoping with this guide you can get off to a faster start than I did as you begin your journey through possibly the top blockchain game in existence right now. More in-depth guides for specific aspects of the game will be coming, so make sure to, to subscribe to the channel, give my other socials link below a follow, and let me know what other, what other types of content you want to see. I also hope to see you all dropping by my live streams as I stream Illuvium and other NFT games five plus days a week over on Twitch. Happy gaming.